Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here today. And I want to welcome you. It is certainly wonderful to see some folks today that we hadn't seen in a while, and that's wonderful as well. It just makes the day great. Also, uh, obviously, there's a sea of pink out in the congregation in the choir today, and thank you for remembering and recognizing those, uh, those that have faced personally and have had supported folks who faced it breast who have faced breast cancer and the more assistance and help that we can be hopefully more and more as the years goes along this will be a, a disease that can be eradicated but thank you for your support of that um, several announcements this morning first off the the beautiful flowers that you see here at the front of the sanctuary are in memory of little joe given by Joe and Marty and his family uh, in honor of Joe's birthday. Tuesday morning at 10, remember our prayer group. Also remember the prayer council that the deacons would like to start here at the church to help us focus on prayer needs as we go forward. Uh, but try to attend the Tuesday morning prayer group if that's possible in your schedule. Wednesday night service was initially going to be led by our guest today, Dr. Cook, but he has been called away to go with a, a disaster relief recovery team to the mountains, so he will not be here this Wednesday night, but Reverend Roy Helms will be leading our Wednesday evening prayer service group on Wednesday night, so feel free to come and be a part of that as well. Next Sunday, we'll celebrate Old Fashioned Sunday, so Long dresses and bonnets and hats and overalls and all those things are welcomed and encouraged. And the music program also will show uh, reference, will reflect worship ways from the past. Next Sunday will be Deacon Nomination Sunday. Uh, please, uh, this week, be in prayerful consideration of those men that you would like to nominate. You'll be nominating two men next Sunday to serve for the next three years. And in the bulletin, the current group of deacons, uh, including the two that will rotate off, are shown in the bulletin. So you can, you can look at that as you prepare and pray for next week. Um, trunk or treat will be coming up on October the 30th, so please remember that. That will be from 6 to 8 that evening. Holly has got three trips being planned and scheduled. There are sign-up sheets on the bulletin board for all three of those. One is October 24th, a ladies' luncheon gathering at A Cause for Tea in Monroe. Uh, on November 9th, a trip to the Columbia Zoo. And on December 7th, the Alabama Theater Christmas Show. So please, if you would, sign up for any of or all of those that you can be a part of. And in your classes this morning, you received a request from Sherry to update our veterans list as well as our Christmas card address list. She had requested that if you would go, go through that and get that back to her by next Sunday, and she can have those lists prepared for us when the time arrives that we need those. Is there other announcements that would come before us just now? All right. Um, prayer request, and I'll start with praise reports. Once again, it is great to see some of those who haven't been able to be with us for a while here today. That's wonderful. We're also thankful for all those who join us online and uh, welcome those folks to our service today as well. <coughs> Please continue to remember to pray for Cindy Whitley and all, this, all the Whitley family uh, during this time. Another request is that you continue to pray for us as a church and for each other as we travel through these days and the loss of our beloved pastor. For those of you that were able to be here Wednesday night, uh, Sherry McAteer spoke wonderful words to us, I think, and she said one thing that I hadn't forgot. She said, uh, don't let our wonderful memories of Preacher Leon Faith keep mentioning his name even if that causes a tear, then the tears, much tears, prove much love. So I thought that was a, an excellent piece of advice. Uh, of course, another prayer request today is the events that have occurred in, in western North Carolina, but also the other states that are in that area. 
Uh, we've all heard and seen many stories. Some are horrific and heartbreaking, and some are encouraging and uplifting. Uh, we do want to remember all of those folks. And on the back of the bulletin, you'll see an update from the Union Baptist Association in a way that allows us to give of our time and talents in that effort. And also, Dr. Cook today will speak further about that at the, in, in the time of the message. He can give us a more updated view of what's going on and what the North Carolina Baptist and local Baptist men on mission and other groups are doing up there. So let's certainly remember that those families up there. Are there other requests that need to come to us at this time? Each week we like to give the opportunity for all of us who I'm sure from time to time have some or even many unspoken prayer requests on our hearts. If you have those at this time and you'd like to signify them by a raised hand, we certainly want to remember all of those as we pray. Thank you very much for that. Um, a little bit out of, a little bit atypical today, but I've asked Dr. Cook to have our prayer time this morning after these prayer requests. I will tell you something about him, and I'll do part of an introduction now. This is Dr. Eric Cook. He's the director of the Union Baptist Association. His dear wife, Anna, it's good to see you. I've known them for years through both church relationships and even business relationships, and I found them to be honorable, uh, prayerful leaders of our, of our Baptists in the area. One thing I will tell you, and I know Dr. Cook would, would tell you the same thing, if you ever need him, he wants you to call him. He's, he's helped us uh, in our deacon group. He's been with us for advice. And I will tell you one thing about him, and this is not to brag on him at all, but if you ever call Dr. Cook, the one thing that will happen, I promise you, before the conversation's over, he will pray for you. So, Dr. Cook, if you'll come this morning. Thank you, Teddy. Austin Grove, good morning. I know your hearts are heavy at the loss of your pastor, and I miss him as well, too. I've known him for many, many years. As a uh, pastor at Midway Baptist Church, one of the things I remember about your pastor is uh, we were trying to figure out how to love up on our seniors in a better way. And somebody said, well, go call Leon. He can give you some ideas. And I remember coming to the church, and it was back when they, when, uh, Y'all recorded your services and had them on VHS. I said, that's a wonderful, I mean, y'all spent a little while, I think. And he took me back, and I said, well, how, I said, what if they don't have a VHS player, what do you do? He said, come with me, and took us back into a room that had nothing but televisions in there, and said you would take a television to them and pop in the VHS tape, and I thought, that's a good idea. So that's just one of the many things I remember about your pastor, and I, I thank you that you have, uh, loved on his wife as much as you have, and I continue encourage you to continue to bless and come alongside them and grieve with them in these hours. Folks, the work is in full swing in Western North Carolina. We have been working uh, diligently, seeming day and night, sending shipments up there to them, sending teams. I myself am going on Monday. Uh, but the most important thing you can do right now, uh, other than, than giving and going, is prayer. And here's two things I'm going to ask you to pray for. For the communications to improve in the mountains. There, with, we need this to be a coordinated effort. And a lot of people are coming, and some of that's not coordinated because the communications, the cell towers are down, landlines are down, two-way radios, uh, all that stuff. It's extremely hard to communicate. And the better we can communicate, the better we can coordinate. Can I get an amen from somebody? And when we communicate better, There'll be more relief, which will bring more hope. So let's pray for two things, better communication and hope. And one of the ways we see hope is when we begin to go, as we load up and we go, when we take ourselves and we sacrifice our time and our efforts to go walk among those people and help get their lives, lives restored. There's a lot of desperate people in the mountains. That could have been us. But anybody, did anybody sleep in the air conditioning last night? Yeah. There's a lot of folks that don't even have homes up there now. 
They may be coming this way in the coming weeks and months. Some will probably just move out and never go back. But to whom much is given, much is required, and we've been blessed mightily. So I want us to take some time and let's bow our heads collectively together if we can and ask God's richest blessings on this moment. Father, thank you for the good people of Austin Grove Baptist Church. I pray the grace and mercy of heaven always rest in this fellowship, and I know they still grieve in these moments from the loss of their pastor. But as they move forward, Lord, I pray that they will remember the good days and the, the great things that he had done in their midst, Lord, and recognize that blessing comes from you and you alone. For Miss Cindy, Lord, we ask your grace and mercy to pour into her life like a great river for this church to continue to enfold her and love her and grieve with her in this hour. Lord, we pray for our, our family and our friends and our neighbors in western North Carolina, Lord, that you, being a sovereign God and and in charge of all things would supernaturally begin to help communications be restored all across western North Carolina. That they'll be able to get up on the sides of those hills and fix those cell towers and get radios working and phones operational. Father, we pray for the powermen, the linemen that go up through those roads that are blocked or washed out, Lord, be able to fix those lines so people can get power back to their homes. Lord, would you begin to use the people of, of the, the Baptists all across our state to stand in the grab, to be your hands and feet, to take hope and mercy and the grace and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray your word this day will go forth in power and glory and goodness and find lodging in the hearts of your people and challenge us to be more Christ-like each and every day. And many raise their hands for unspoken requests, Lord, and you know exactly what's going on in their lives. I pray, Father, that you will challenge them to walk close to you, to, to be find your word sufficient in everything and in all ways and that you would cause us to be a people of prayer and in that Lord you would incline your ear and hear our desire for you to do great things in the earth for your name's sake and it's in Jesus precious and holy name we pray and all God's people said Amen. while Carolyn's coming just to remind you in case you did not see that there are offering envelopes in the Sunday school classes and for, for the disaster relief opportunities and Sherry will be glad to make more if we need more or you can use a regular envelope and just denote it that way but then that way we can funnel these funds and efforts to the folks in the mountains. I did forget one thing and she remembers and I don't. <laughs> I don't have my information in front of me, but that's okay. First of all, good morning. Um, the Rotary Club in Marshville is sponsoring a blood drive. I believe it's October 10th maybe, but it's on the bulletin board. I posted the flyer back there so you'll know what to do. But anyway, M Marshall United Methodist Church will have it there at their fellowship hall, and it is sponsored by the Rotary Club. So if you are able to donate blood, I am sure they would appreciate you getting, a, and getting an appointment and being there to help with that amazing activity. So thank you so much for listening.
join with us as we continue to worship by singing hymn number 177. There's just something about that name. Stand with us as we sing. Y'all come to the front. Mr. Brandon's on the way to bring you a message this morning. One thing I would even say, even to these young ones up here, you know, if, if God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, he don't need our money. He needs our obedience. And if if we will do that, even in the small manners that we each can do, there can be magnificent things occur, not only in the mountains, but in all phases of our lives. So, thank you. What's going on? How are we doing? Good? Having a good week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Today we're going to talk about prayer. Okay, the power of prayer. Ephesians 6, 18 says to pray in the Spirit all circumstances to pray all the time so of course I brought you something I want you to tell me what you think about it huh let's see if I can do it in here properly something you've seen many times what is this pretzel 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 don't eat it I got it last night don't eat it don't eat it <laughs> what does this remind you of talk to me use your creative minds like you do what what symbols shapes things what could this remind you of Heart, heart, okay. <laughs> okay, like the medic symbol? Okay. That's a, I love your mind. I love your mind. Okay. Keep going. Talk. Anything. Heart. Right, man. Great answers. How many holes are in this pretzel? What? Why is the number three really important to us as Christians? What are, what are three things that we know that are combined into one. What are they? Holy Spirit's one. The Father and the Son. Okay? Three holes. Okay? Some, something else about this. What about, I'll give you an example. Right? To the center. Arms wrapped together. You see that? You can try that. It's a very awkward move. All right? So I'm like a human pretzel for prayer. For yeah, okay, everybody do it. Okay, we can do that. We can do it. All right. Okay, you go out, cross your hands. Okay, and then push them back like this. Nice, nice. Okay, you got. I see if you got it. Okay. So those are for praying hands. Okay. 
That's pretty close. Pretty close. Keep practicing. These are praying hands, okay? And we know we have a really catastrophic event that we need to pray for. Okay, let's stay focused. Stay focused. And we need to pray for that. But the power of prayer, just small things can trigger our minds to make big differences. Remember, you are world changers, okay? The world is yours to change. We need you. We need you. Say your prayers. Read your Bibles, okay? You got it? What's up? Our food thing. Oh, that's our tray. Remember, we use for other items. So it's just our prep station. Got it? Thank you all. I love your questions, man. You're, you're awesome people. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our Father, thank you for the energy. Thank you, Lord, so much that these children are so open to you, Lord. I pray that we can fill them with your spirit, Lord, that we can teach them, that we can instruct them the power of prayer, Lord. We have so many examples of uh, the significance of prayer, Lord. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to communicate with you, Lord, so that we can be in harmony with you, Lord. Let these children change the world day by day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get your bulletin. Thank you. Join with us and stand as you stand and sing 342, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Set us free. I'll bring your love, must be. 
Yeah, as a director of missions, what do I do? A little bit of everything. If it has to do with church life, I do it. Uh, pastor, ministering to pastors, helping churches find pastors, planting churches, merging churches, uh, helping churches be revitalized, shipping tractor trailer loads of supplies to Western North Carolina or anywhere there needs to be help and mobilizing teams and whatever needs to be done. That's what, that's what I get to do, the high privilege and honor to be able to do that, serve churches like this one right here. Uh, it's been a privilege and honor to be able to do that. And one of my favorite things is to stand before you and open up God's Word. For I have a word from you today from the Lord. It's found in the book of Acts this morning. Take your Bibles, if you will. Turn to the book of Acts, chapter 8. We'll see what the Lord will say to us today. You know... Uh, I've been in, the, been in the heart of this storm thing going on for several days now since this thing started, and it's neat to watch. Uh, let me just start with my son Isaac. You know, watching him get his wings in regards to being a servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been up there in the heart of that since this thing started, up there in Spruce Pine. I didn't even know there was a place called Pensacola up there. Uh, Micaville. Uh, Marshall, all these names that some I'd never heard, some I'd just in fleeting. Some of those towns are gone, wiped off the map. And he's calling back, and when he's able to get a signal, sending pictures of the great tragedy that's there. But what I began to hear in his voice, Teddy, was the Lord was working. And he was beginning to see things and finding the great privilege and blessing of being a servant first and foremost that's what God I'll just tell you at our very best that's what we are our servants of the Lord Jesus Christ before we, before we go any further y'all can y'all hear me am I on brother we good let's pray before we go any further father as we press into this message I pray your word would go forth in power and glory and goodness and find lodging in the hearts of your people I pray you'll quicken our hearts every single person in here today father the things that you would have us do to arise and go in this hour for your honor and glory and all God's people said even this morning he called and shared things with me of uh, him and about he took his younger brother with him and about 12 young men the work that they did yesterday they're working today matter of fact I saw one of the churches that was there had a lot of damage and the sign out front said 11 o'clock service open so right now at this hour across western North Carolina many of our brothers and sisters in Christ have gathered together to celebrate a risen Savior and hope in the midst of darkness are y'all listening out there? And hope in the midst of darkness. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And we possess it and have the high honor and privilege of extending it to our friends and our family and our neighbors in western North Carolina. So what does the word say to us in regards to that? Here in Acts number 8 we find that the church, Jesus Christ, has been raised from the dead. The fledgling church has been birthed and people are beginning to hear about it and this lady by the name of Candace who was over a nation in Africa has sent one of her emissaries to Jerusalem to worship and this man comes and he worships and he hears this story about the Messiah that has come and walked the earth and was crucified dead and buried and on the third day he rose from the dead and he heard that story and probably saw that in the midst of all the things that were happening there in the city of Jerusalem. And he gets into his chariot and he begins to make his way back home. And he has in his possession a scroll of Isaiah. And as he's reading, that's where we pick up this story. Acts chapter 8 this morning, starting in verse number 26, we find these fateful words. Now it says, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, which was one of what is one of the disciples of Christ? Now, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to, to, to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of, of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot he was reading Isaiah the prophet verse 29 says and the spirit said to Philip go near and overtake this chariot so Philip 
ran to him and heard his reading and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said do you understand what you're reading and he said how can I unless someone guides me and he asked Philip to come and sit with him and the place in the scripture which he read was this listen to the words of Isaiah he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his shears is silent so he opened not his mouth in his, in his humiliation his justice was taken away and who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth so the eunuch answered Philip there in verse number 34 and said I ask you of whom does the prophet say this of himself or some other man and then Philip opened his mouth and beginning beginning at his at this scripture preached Jesus to him now as they went down the road they came to some water and the eunuch said see here is water what hinders me from being baptized and then Philip said if you believe with all your heart you may and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God so he commanded the chariot to stand still and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him now when they had come up out of the water the spear of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way doing what church say it again rejoicing but Philip was found at, Az at, Az at Azotus and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea around the turn of the 20th century church there was a group of missionaries known as the one-way missionaries when they departed from the mission field they packed all of their belongings into a coffin and bought one-way tickets because they knew they would never return home A.W. Milne was one of those missionaries he felt the, uh, called to a tribe of headhunters in, a, in an island called the New Hebrides all the other missionaries to the tribe had been martyred which meant they meant had been killed for their faith but Milne he found favor among these people and he lived among this tribe for 35 years and never returned home now listen the tribe buried him and wrote the following words on his tombstone when he came there was no light and when he left there was no darkness there is darkness in the mountains of North Carolina there are people without hope their homes are gone their businesses are gone their family members may be dead they some don't even know have not even been able to communicate with them we have people here that still have not communicated with friends and family there is a despair that is among us and we who have been bought with a price who have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise know that we have been delivered from darkness and death hell and the grave and we have been called the salt and light of the Lord Jesus Christ and we have the high opportunity to do what Philip has done here and that is to rise and go and carry the hope of Jesus Christ amen, amen. so we want to first things we're going to see in carrying the gospel to the ends of the earth and ways to expand the kingdom of God and bring that hope is that the kingdom is expanded by obeying God's command to go a simple truth my first point listen the kingdom is expanded by obeying God's command to go that's what Philip did it says it here clearly in this passage an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip an angel came to him if an angel came to you and said something you probably would listen I would hope you would I mean, that doesn't happen every day does it God dispatched an angel and he spoke to Philip listen to what he said this is an angel speaking a message from God to Philip arise and go that is a command good people that is not a suggestion that is not something hopefully we will do it is a command from God himself he dispatched a messenger to go and speak to Philip so that he might go and be with this Ethiopian eunuch so that the gospel would leave Jerusalem to the four corners of the world and he arose and he went we need to recognize that he said arise and go s south along the road which goes down to, to Jerusalem from Gaza in the desert so verse 27 says and he arose and went he obeyed and and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians who had charged of all her treasury had come to Jerusalem to 
worship. Didn't know Christ as Lord and Savior. Was dead in his trespasses and sins. Was just doing his job listening to Candace and coming and being an emissary, a representative there in Jerusalem. And he worshiped at the temple. And I imagine that he heard that story of that the Messiah had come. But Philip did what he was supposed to do. He was commanded of the Lord to arise and go. And that command comes across thousands of years, 2,000 years. God's word's a living word, amen? It's not just for that day and that hour. It is for us in this moment and this hour. For darkness is in the earth, not only in western North Carolina, but there has been a great flood. It started in the beginning in the garden. And I'm not talking about the Noah's flood. I'm talking about the flood of sin that has touched all things and broken everything and marred all things in the earth. We have all been touched by sin. I'll prove it to you. In the Old Testament, there's ten commandments, correct? Are y'all still out there? That was a question. Ten commandments, right? Well, the Bible says that uh, if we break one of them, we're guilty of breaking them. You're with me. So let me ask you. The Bible says that we're not, we're not supposed to bear false witness. You ever bore false witnesses or lied? Anybody? Just me and you, brother. Amen. Just me and you. <laughs> the rest of them didn't raise their hand. We will do an invitation right afterwards right down here. The rest of you that lied because you didn't raise your hand. How many of y'all have ever told a lie? There you go, about half of us now, we're getting there. How many have ever taken anything that wasn't yours? You just lied again, go ahead and put them up there. How many of you have ever disobeyed your mother and father, raised both hands and both feet? The Bible says, if we break one of God's commands, we're guilty of breaking them. I imagine everybody raised their hand at least once. We've all transgressed the law of the Lord. It has affected everything. It's even affected the very nature of, of our weather. The earth itself has been transgressed. That's why we have these storms. Why? I'm going to say, why? Why? Because we live in a sin-filled world. That's not a good answer for somebody that's lost everything, but it's true nonetheless. And in that, hope is broken. And people are enchained to their sins and they have nobody to come rescue them. They can't rescue themselves. And we have the high honor and responsibility and God has dispatched His angel. He speaks to us this day. You hear the message of God. We must arise and go. I share this across the association because we have been given much. To whom much is given, much is required. I don't know that there's a more blessed church in Union County than maybe right here in this corner of the world. God sovereignly has placed you in the best state, in the best county, in the best church. Anybody, anybody listen? Anybody agree with that? We got food on the table, clothes in the closet, children sitting next to us in a church with electricity. Arise. Arise, good people. Hear the word of the Lord as he arises Tell, uh, commands, us, commands us to arise and go. You are his child. Your name's written in the Lamb's book of life, filled with the Holy Spirit of promise, given his unchanging word, the hope of heaven, everything you need for life and godliness. Rise up, rise up, you Christians, and let's see God work in this hour. Like a man named, like William Carey, he heard the call to arise and go. He was the father of modern missions, and, and he went to India. In 1792, he organized a missionary society and at its inaugural meeting preached a sermon called, listen, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. The reason we should expect great things from God is because we got a great God. They call him almighty for a reason. He has all the might. Why? Because he made all things with the breath of his mouth and it did not tax him or diminish him at all. When it says he rested, it wasn't because he was tired, it's because he was done. And your God is almighty and glorious, and he, and he is the one that we expect great things from because he is a great God. And because he has set his affections upon us and sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise, he expects great things from us. Arise and go and open your mouths and watch God do great things in this hour and this moment for his honor and glory and praise. Hang on just a minute. Let's catch another gear. 
There's a passage in 2 Timothy that says this. Listen closely. He's speaking to young Timothy who was a little fearful because he was getting ready to pastor a church. And he says to Timothy, I didn't, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. That same God that, that filled Timothy with his Holy Spirit and did not give him a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind is your God. And if he has sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise, you possess the same thing. So let's talk about fear. What is it? How many of us wrestle with it? Fear at its core, at its heart. Well, let me just ask you this. Do we have any professional worriers in the house? There y'all go lying again. How many are professional worriers? Let's go ahead and put them on up. Be unashamed. There's a, there's a few of you in here. Thank you for your honesty. How many of y'all have ever worried in your life? Anybody ever worried at once? The Bible tells us not to worry. Why? If you begin to tell, tear worry down to its very core, all that it is is fear. I, I'm afraid my child's not going to come home tonight. I'm afraid of my diagnosis of cancer. I, my, my, I'm afraid my bank account doesn't add up. I'm afraid I might lose my job. I'm afraid the flood of the floodwaters. I'm afraid. That's all it is, people. And his word says, I didn't get, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. So if you're walking in fear, there's no faith in that moment. Because faith and fear regarding the things of the world can't exist in the same place. Now the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. It's a reverential fear. But I'm talking about fearing things in the earth. That if we are a fearful people, we're not being allowing the spirit of God to move in us. In resurrection power. For he said, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power. Holy Ghost power. Resurrection power is yours this day, this hour. It's not going to show up in a couple days. The Amazon man's not going to deliver it to your house. If you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you have the power of God. We ought to rise up in this hour and walk in it. Rise up and go. Some of you have the physical ability to get on bands and go to Western North Carolina. Raise up a team. Go. The rest of you can pray and give and send for His glory. Not only that, but He's given you a spirit of love. Not love of a mater sandwich or sweet tea or your dog or your grand youngest. But love that caused God's only begotten to leave the portals of heaven to come walk among us when we weren't worth coming to get. What love is this? That caused God's only begotten to come to the earth, to live among us, to walk among us, and we beat him and spat upon him and mocked him and hung him on a tree. The Bible says that he has shed his love abroad in our hearts like a great river. If you've been washed in the blood, it ought to spill out of you into the lives of people around you. If you truly, he told Timothy this, stir it up, boy, stir it up. Because if not, we'll just sit on the pews and just watch everybody else do the, do the work. We've got to stir it up. And the love that's been shed abroad in our hearts, and when you unleash it to be a blessing on others, I'm here to tell you, you'll be blessed more than them. That's just the way our God works. Amen? Clearly, a clear word to Philip. And a clear word for us today. In order to see the kingdom of God expanded is to arise and go. Secondly, the kingdom is expanded by obeying God's command to proclaim the gospel. Look at verse number 30. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? He said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And the place of scripture which he read was this. And he, these next few verses are, are from the scroll of Isaiah 53. Verse 34 says, So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Verse 35, look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and started right where this man was 
and preach Jesus to him. Y'all look right here. The love that's been shed abroad in your heart that God desires for you to share with everybody around you, not only the folks in Western North Carolina, but everybody in your life, can best be expressed when you open your mouth and speak the gospel message of Jesus Christ. I propose to you it's, it's the highest form of worship. Sometimes most of us think that worship is only relegated to singing. Obedience is, a form, is one of the highest forms of, a, of, a, of worship. And when you open your mouth and speak of the Lord Jesus Christ, what you're simply doing is Jesus is life, and He is the life giver. And those that are dead in their trespasses and sins, when you open your mouth and you speak the message of life that's only found in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they believe and they come from death to life, and life everlasting is given to them, then God's glory is magnified in the earth. It is the highest form of worship. And we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto salvation. Here's how you check your work about that, if you're ashamed of the gospel. If you do not open your mouth and speak of the everlasting message of Jesus Christ, I propose you're ashamed. To whom much is given, much is required. And I want to see the kingdom of God expanded into all the earth. And there's people in western North Carolina who are dead in their trespasses and sins. Not only did a did the Helene sweep through their lives, but the, but, the, but the tragedy of sin has swept through their lives. And they've lost everything and have no hope. But we are the people of hope. We are the people of hope. God has set His affections upon us and desires for us to be His emissaries, Him as ambassadors. Let us open our mouths. Not only in Western North Carolina, but at home among our friends and our families for His great glory. Amen? I remember, Teddy, going with a team one time, a mission team down to Cuba, a communist country who doesn't, very, who doesn't uh, look too fondly on the Christian faith. They wouldn't let them have churches like this, but they let them have a house church. And the only reason they allowed a church in that nation was because it brought in money. And they needed it in that desperately poor nation. It's an island nation, beautiful nation, and we were at a house church, and we just got through worshiping, and there was a beach not far away. It's not like our beaches here. It's just a it's just rough, rock-hewn beach. But a lot of the Cubans would go down there for the weekend, and, and some of our team had gone down there to, to take a little break. And I went down there to see them, and I noticed there was a Cuban guy that was talking to some of the ladies there, and, and he, had, they'd be, he had been drinking and kind of was hitting on them and stuff. So I went down there and got in between him and the ladies. He didn't like that too much. He started speaking st stuff in Spanish to me. I wasn't sure what he was saying, so I got the interpreter and brought them over there. And I said, what's he saying? He said, he said, he wants to know what you're doing in his country. And I said, tell him I'm, I'm glad he asked me that question. I've come to tell him that God loves him. And when she told him that, big crocodile tears began to roll down his face. And he fell down in the sand on his knees and he began to weep. And I got down there with him and I pulled the interpreter down there with him and I opened my mouth and I told him about the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and he embraced him as Lord and Savior and went into the sand a dead man and rose up a follower of Christ with everlasting life and as we made our way back to the house church he followed us waving his hands and weeping and crying for he had come from death to life folks those stories are everywhere if we only open our mouths and speak of Jesus Christ There was a day we were all dead in our trespasses and sins. We were without Christ. And we heard that everlasting message. And we have been transformed. Arise and go and open your mouths for the glory of the Lord and the dispelling of despair in the earth. Let hope arise. Let hope arise as the bride of Christ shines in the, in the ways that God has called us. Let it be with supplies and prayers and going and however else God moves upon you. You've been given gifts and talents to do mighty things. Use those in these moments for the name of Jesus Christ and His sake in the earth. Jesus Himself, when the two men uh, 
that were in Jerusalem made their way back on the road to Emmaus. They were trying to process everything they'd heard in Jerusalem, that the Messiah had come, that he had been crucified, that he'd been put in the ground, and miraculously he had been raised from the dead. They were trying to figure these things out. And in Luke 24 we find these words. Then he spoke to them as Jesus walked with these two men back to Emmaus. He said, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter in his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, you see that? He, exp he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He started where those men were and told them about himself. Philip, when he got in the chariot with that man, he started with where he was and told him about Christ. And there's people that are in the western part of the state that we just need to go get in their lives and sit on their porch if they have one. Or stand in their open field where what once used to be their house. And starting at that place, tell them about the everlasting hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. And bring them relief and help them pick up the pieces of their lives so that they can see the power and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally this, the kingdom expanded produces lasting fruit. Verse 36 says this, now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So the eunuch commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Listen to verse 39. And when they had come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And it says that the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. And he rejoiced, I imagine, all the way back to Ethiopia where he probably had a meeting with Candace, the lady that sent him there. And she probably said, tell me about your trip. How did it go? And I can imagine the things that came out of his mouth. Just think about it. He probably began to say, I just went there to worship and see the people. There was, a, there was this excitement in the, in the city of Jerusalem. They said the Messiah had come and walked the earth and was healing people and feeding them and doing might, mighty miracles among them. And the Romans took him and they, they beat him and stripped his garments from him and they took him to, Calvary, or to, the, to a hill and, and, and nailed him to a cross and lifted him up between heaven and earth and he died there. And two old men take, took, got his body down and, and put it in a tomb. And everyone fled. And on the third day they said that he came back from the dead and walked among the people and ate with them and spoke. And I was reading in the book of Isaiah about this, this man and couldn't understand it. And, and God sent one of his own disciples, that one of the disciples of Christ came alongside my chariot and told me about him. And I have believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ and I have come from death to life, Candace. And I wonder if she trusted in Christ as Lord and Savior. And I wonder if the people in Ethiopia have heard the name of Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, for it left a, left a lasting impact among the Ethiopian people. And we have the high honor and responsibility for being his emissaries, for speaking on behalf of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Blessed be his name. I'm going to get to preaching here in a minute. Y'all hold on. I remember, Teddy, when I was at Midway Baptist Church, because we're so close to Wingate, we had a lot of Wingate students coming. There was a girl from, uh, excuse me, uh, Indonesia, where there's a 87% Muslim, and she was Muslim, and her family was Muslim. On an Easter service, she came to know Christ as Lord and Savior, got gloriously saved. We began to disciple her and watch her grow in the Lord. She graduated and she came and sat in my office and was in tears. And she said to me, I'm getting ready to go back home. What do I tell my mom and daddy? And I was at a loss for words. You see, around here what happens is we're like, oh, yeah, you got saved? Wonderful. <clears throat> Let's have a party. Let's get you a little necklace. Let's get you a new Bible. Let's celebrate and have a covered dish dinner. If she went back to and listened to her Muslim parents, they probably would have disowned her. And 
never spoke to her ever again. I went on a mission, I went on, excuse me, I went on a trip to Jerusalem, and the guy that I went with, his name was Al Reitman. He is Jewish. And at some, some Southern Baptist church somewhere, some boys invited him to come to vacation Bible school. And his mama was tired of him being in the house in the middle of the summertime, so she sent him with him. And he heard about this, this Jewish man by the name of Jesus. And he embraced him as Lord and Savior in a Southern Baptist church in vacation Bible school. He went back home to his Jewish daddy and told him what had happened. And his daddy considered him dead. He, the Jewish term his is what his dad is called, sitting shiva. I mean, when someone dies in your family, you cover all the mirrors. You don't sit on anything soft. You sit up crates. You sit on heart crates and you mourn the dead. And he sat Shiva for his son. He counted him as dead and made him leave. And he never spoke to his son ever again. And we got on a trip and we flew to Israel with Al Reichman. He, and his dad had moved to Israel and died and was buried on the Mount of Olives. He didn't even know where the grave was. His uncle would not even tell him. And the, the person that was heading up our tour found out where his dad was buried. And we drove the bus to the Mount of Olives where they have above ground graves. And if you go by and visit, you take a rock and you put it on the grave to say that you've been there. Al got out and went and stood at his father's grave that he had not spoke to in 18 years. There's a great price for following the Lord Jesus Christ. But to whom much is given, much is required. And you're a servant of the Most High God, just like Philip was. And the call to arise and go is here today among us in this hour. We have a tractor trailer load sitting in our parking lot waiting to be filled up. And when that thing gets filled up, there's guys all across western North Carolina that do the same thing I do. And I have contact with them, and for those that I can get in contact with. And I call them and I say, do you need a load? And they'll say, no, we're good. Send it to so and so, and I'll call somebody else and say, we need a load. I've sent multiple tractor trailer loads up there. When this one's full, I'm going to send it where it's needed. And when it comes back, we're going to fill it again, and we're going to send it where it's needed. And we're going to do that until the need is met. That's going to be years. Years. We're going to send teams. I'm leaving Monday with a team of several churches. We already have teams up there. I hope you'll put together some able-bodied guys, men and women that want to go, and go and carry the good news of Jesus Christ. Arise and go and let us open our mouths together to see God's glory in all the earth. And finally this, and we're done. You may be sitting under the preached word of God and you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Understand this, that your sin separates you from a holy God. You are dead in your trespasses and sins. If you die without Christ, you will split the gates of hell wide open and you'll be separated from God forever in a place called hell where the worm never dies, where the flames never cease. But God does not desire that any should perish. That's why he sent his son, the only begotten, the Lord Jesus Christ, to do what we were unable to do. Remember we all raised our hands because we said we were sinners and transgressed his law? God, because his law had been broken, demanded that justice come about and the only way we could assuage the wrath of God was by offering a perfect sacrifice the book of Leviticus says life is in the blood God demanded a life a perfectly lived life according to the law no one could do it there was no nation no government no man that's why God came God himself came to the earth in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and lived a perfect life righteous life the lawgiver lived according to the law and under the law and fulfilled the law and he took our sins with him he paid in price in full for our sins and took them with him to the grave and the Bible says because his sacrifice was acceptable he rose from the dead with healing in his wings according to the book of Micah and he says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved, brought back into right relationship with God and given everlasting life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Our musicians, if you'll come at this moment, just begin to play softly for us.
Do you know Christ as Lord and Savior? Have you placed your trust in Him alone for salvation? If not, in this moment, I encourage you to come forward and we'll pray here together that you can enter in to an everlasting relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. For the rest of us, the, the, the gauntlet has been thrown down. He asks us to arise and go. Will you come pray for the people of Western North Carolina and for your part in it to arise and go for His great glory. Father, we pray you'll bless this moment of decision. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Stand to your feet if you would, folks. This altar is open. I invite you to come.